We are here at the Jordan Valley with the Golan Heights behind us. That's as close as we can get to Haran, where the story of Abraham in the direction of the Holy Land, of the land of Canaan, starts. We have behind us Damascus and Syria, and we cannot, because of the political situation, enter it. Maybe also the area where Haran is in southern Turkey does not look that much different from what it looks here. We're in Genesis 12, in verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Abram, let's not too quickly pro proceed from here. It sounds so familiar, so usual, so unspectacular if it says the Lord said. But the rabbis observe that it's exactly the same word, like in the beginning of the Bible, when the Lord speaks and creation starts. And maybe we are not aware, if the Lord speaks, there is more power, more energy, more dynamics in the process than in a, what can I imagine, a nuclear test. It is powerful words, creative words, that are at the beginning of the people of Israel, of the Jewish people. And if you once discovered that, you see that this is one of the red threads going throughout the whole Bible. I'm quoting from Psalm 147. It says there, He sends out His Word and the snow, or maybe even stone, melts. And then you see in the Psalm how He not just send out, sends out His Word, but He draws back His breath and the water flows. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and rules to Israel. And now listen, he has not done so to any other nation. They do not know his rules. And this actually did not change in the New Testament. In Romans 3, the Apostle Paul asks, what now is the advantage of to be a Jew? What is the profit of circumcision? And he underlines much in every way. And then he starts with one thing, for to them the words of the one and only living God were entrusted. Or if you take Romans 9 verse 4, Paul talks about who are the Israelites. And most Bible translation render that, that the Israelites are those to whom belongs the law. And we as Christians go very quickly over and say, okay, them, we leave the law to them. We have the gospel. But actually, Paul wants to describe there is something and he invents a new word into the Greek language that says the giving of Torah is the privilege, is the riches of the Jewish people. Or in Psalm 33, we have something of this power, of the power of this word. It says there, he spoke and it came to be, it happened. He commanded and there it stood. He just says a word, he says, light, and there is light. That's what we never should forget if we as Christians open the Bible. It's not just the philosophy we are dealing with. We're touching the very character, the very being of the living God. And you know what? If we do want to understand the word of this one and living God in a true way, in its want to touch the real power, we have to go back to Israel, to the land of Israel, to the Jewish people, and you will discover 
after some time that it starts with the words we are using. You know, fruit here in the Holy Land is something else than fruit in Europe or in America or in Africa. Mountains here in the Holy Land, in the land of Israel, are something else than in Switzerland. Swiss people or Nepalese people from the Himalayas might look at these mountains and say, that's not mountains, that's hills at the best. If you want to taste, if you want to experience the original breathtaking creative power of the world, word of the living God, we have to turn to the Jewish people and ask them, please teach us the word of God. We have to turn to the land of Israel and ask ourselves, what is it all about, the connection of this land with the word of the Bible?